determine the domain of each vector valued function. The domain of a vector valued function given by r of t is the intersection of the domains of the three components x of t, y of t, and z of t, which indicates to be in the domain of r of t, the value of t must be in the domain of x of t, and the domain of y of t, and the domain of z of t. It's always helpful to know the domains of basic functions, but we'll also determine the domains of the vector valued functions by analyzing the graphs of the components. So for example, for number one, x of t equals two sine t is graphed in blue, y of t equals negative cosine two t is graphed in red, and z of t equals natural log of the quaternary t plus two is graphed in black. The domain of the vector valued function is the intersection of the domains of the three components. Notice the interval for which all three functions are defined would be when t is greater than negative two. Also notice the domain of x of t and y of t is all real numbers, but the domain of z of t is not. The domain of z of t equals natural log of the quantity t plus two determines the domain of the vector valued function. Again, all three components are defined over the interval where t is greater than negative two. Let's graph this on the t-axis. We'd have an open point on negative two and an arrow to the right. This is the interval for which all three components are defined, which is also the intersection of the three domains. This is the domain of the vector valued function. Using set builder notation, we have t such that t is greater than negative two. Using interval notation, we can also express a domain as the open interval from negative two to infinity. Number two, x of t equals five t squared is graphed in blue. The domain is all reals. Y of t equals one divided by t is graphed in red. Notice a vertical asymptote at t equals zero. T is not in the domain. And z of t equals one divided by the quantity t minus three graphed in black. Notice t equals three is not in the domain. Because zero is not in the domain of y of t, it cannot be in the domain of the vector valued function. Let's make an open point at t equals zero. Because t equals three is not in the domain of z of t, three cannot be in the domain of r of t. Let's make an open point at t equals three. For all their values of t, notice all three functions are defined. All their values of t are in the domain of each component. This is the intersection of the three domains and therefore this is the domain of the vector valued function. We have t such that t is less than zero or t is greater than zero and less than three or t is greater than three. Or using interval notation, we have the open interval from negative infinity to zero, union, the open interval from zero to three, union, the open interval from three to infinity. Number three, we have x of t graphed in blue, which is a parabola, the domain is all reals. We have y of t equals cosine three t graphed in red, again the domain is all reals. And then we have z of t equals two t minus one graphed in black. Once again, the domain is all reals. Because the domain of each component is all reals, the domain of the vector valued function is also all reals. The graph of the domain would be the entire t-axis, which is all real numbers. Using set builder notation, we have t such that t is greater than negative infinity and less than positive infinity. Or using interval notation, we have the open interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. And for our last example, we have x of t equals one fourth t graphed in blue. The domain is all reals. A y of t equals one divided by t squared graphed in red. Notice t equals zero was not in the domain. Let's make an open point on the t-axis at t equals zero. This cannot be in the domain of the vector valued function. And then we have z of t equals the square root of the quantity t plus four graphed in black. Notice the domain of z of t is t greater than or equal to negative four. So let's go ahead and graph that domain on the t-axis but of course we also have to exclude t equals zero. So we have a closed point on negative four, arrow to the right, excluding t equals zero because of y of t. This is the intersection of all three domains. This is the interval for which all three components are defined. This is a domain 
of the vector valued function, which is t such that t is greater than or equal to negative four and less than zero, or t is greater than zero. Or using interval notation, we have the interval from negative four to zero, closed on negative four, open on zero, union, the open interval from zero to infinity. I hope you found this helpful.